Number three is Punchbowl Mosque in Sydney. It represents architectural detailing at the highest standard. The Punchbowl Mosque getting through to the final round really is a validation of the quality of the architecture in this project. Sitting in a very typical suburb of Sydney is a very striking and untypical building. Punchbowl Mosque is a first for Australia. Adrian, it's a striking piece of architecture. How did Angelo get the commission? Well, the Australian Islamic Mission, our clients, are a charitable religious non-profit organisation who've been based in the neighbourhood since the early 70s. They moved to the sites in the 90s and engaged in the process of consolidation of a number of properties to form what is ultimately this site for the mosque. It's an unusual building. It's striking in its context and it's also striking for a religious building in that it doesn't really look like a church. Angela comes from a non-Muslim faith. Uh, part of the reason why we were engaged uh, to develop this site was the client's desire to be more open and welcoming towards the broader community. Obviously there's a longevity to the concrete as well. It looks like a building that's going to be here for a long time. Correct. Well, the part of the client's brief was to design a building that would last for 100 years. Angelo's intent was being a spiritual religious building that would be here for a thousand years. Perhaps the best way to experience the building would be as the worshippers would, if you come this way. So Peter, this is the male ablution space where worshippers first come into to cleanse themselves prior to moving through into the mosque. It's beautiful. It's got this lovely soft curved ceiling that just draws the light in. So the intent of this space is to prepare you mentally for moving through into the main prayer space. It's part of that washing ritual of that spiritual you're ready to move through. So it's about closing out the external world. We have concealed filtered light from the top. We start to introduce black bush as material to warm up the space. And I love the way these cleaning seats are very much based on a traditional pattern of seating in any mosque that you would find in the Arab world. And once the, the worshipper has bathed, they're then permitted to enter the main space. Yes, so they pass through this compressed area through into the main prayer space. Wow, it's really low, isn't it? Yes. Like you really feel like the building's sucking you in. Absolutely, so we've intentionally created this quite compressed space, again, to settle you as you move through into the larger mosque space. Wow. The raking concrete ceiling comprises of approximately 102 quarter sphere domes, all cast or formed in concrete, and it references back to traditional motifs in Islamic architecture, which we've obviously taken through into quite a contemporary interpretation. So all of these elements were poured in place, so it's all all formed concrete, and within the centre of each one of these quarter spheres, we've cast a 30 millimetre diameter pipe which draws natural light in from the outside and again that's referencing the Arab tradition of navigation by stars and it also references how the sun moves around the space during the day because obviously we worship at different times of the day. The male worshippers come through to this space down here and then the female worshippers are drawn into the heart of the mosque up above on level one with this timber screen forming that separation between the male and female. It's such a big building but there's no heating or cooling. It's all done by natural ventilation and by the use of basically people moving through the space. Absolutely, so we draw all the warm air from this space where it's been generated and it gets sucked up out through the minaret, through those gills, mm -hmm. and also through the dome which has fixed trickle vents to allow the heat to escape. So Adrian, for what appears to be a relatively simple building, there are actually moments of craftsmanship. Absolutely. So where we have had the opportunity, such as in this sacred space, we've added that extra level of refinement and detail through this stone, for example, which is obviously a wonderful black granite with this gold and white veining running through it, which adds that robustness and obviously that quality to this sacred space. And the concrete domes themselves, I mean, they're very unusual. Can you explain how did you actually build that? In order to cast the forms, we created individual fiberglass moulds for each of the 102 sculpted forms and then it was all poured on site by the builder and it really is a testament to the builder that they managed to pull off such a complex task with such an incredible outcome. I, I've never seen a ceiling like it. It is a very unique design and it's been crafted and built to an incredibly high degree so from our point of view it's an amazing outcome. And possibly the only one in the world? I would expect so yeah. <laughs>